Ameritech is proud to introduce you to their latest in support software for the TAB commissioning and clean room industries, TAB Ops Reporting 2020. In celebration of over 20 years of creating custom software, Ameritech took its popular TAB reporting software and rewrote it from the ground up. TAB Ops Reporting 2020 is now the ultimate TAB commissioning and clean room reporting software in the industry. So without further ado, I, I introduce you to Derek Hedrick, Chief Technical Officer for Ameritech Data Solutions and the only complete tab reporting software solutions available on the market today. Take it away, Derek. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Hey, I uh, want to welcome everybody to the 2021 Virtual CX Energy Conference. So last year, we were going to launch our uh, premier application now, Tab Reporting 2020. Uh, obviously, 2020 was a rugged year, so we're going to do it in 2021. So when I redesigned this, the one thing that I was looking at was trying to figure out how to make it work for everybody. So what we determined was is that the majority of people that were doing data collection were doing it on an Excel or an Excel style application. So one of the things that we did was we made our application very Excel-like. So as you go through and you look at it, you will see that it's very familiar and it looks like it's Excel. Make no mistake, it is not Excel. We have written every single functionality in here to make it work so that you will be able to take and use it in the field because those people already know how to use Excel. A couple of the things or points in here is we use tab views. So basically everything now is running in tabs. Your browsers are in tabs, Excel's in tabs. And so we have given you a tab view to be able to manage those. The other thing we give you is the ability to move tabs around so you can pick them up and drag them where you want them to. Also, you have the right click functionality on a tab. So you can copy a form, you can rename a form, you can delete a form, you can move forms, you can preview forms, you can export data to Excel. Because of the fact that we have mimicked Excel, we have the ability to dump data into Excel formats. So what you'll see is you'll have a forms collection over here. So the reason I say this is the ultimate in tab reporting is the limitation that you have with Excel is the fact that it is going to be limited by just doing data collection. In our system, you have the ability to take and do data collection as well as to assemble the final report. So basically, if you are um, in the field and you're collecting information and it goes back to the office and you need to put in a pump curve or you need to put a calibration certificates or something like that into your final report, you have the ability to do so directly from the application. This container right here is a forms container. So I had people, you know, come by the booth when we were at uh, Energy, CX Energy and say, you know, do you have commissioning software? And the answer is, is who does anybody really have commissioning software? Because of the fact that commissioning is so unique for each application, it becomes very difficult to take and write an application that deals specifically with commissioning. With our application, what I envisioned was having a filing cabinet, i.e. this is your filing cabinet, and you assemble the documents that you need in order to make your final report. So for commissioning, we would take and work with you to take and put your forms in the filing cabinet, and then you would be able to create your actual commissioning report by assembling the package the way that you would do normally. The beautiful thing about our application is, is you can do it all in one application. You can put in your Excel files, you can put in your Word documents, you can put in additional PDFs, you can put in additional Excel files. All of that is available inside the application. So no longer do you have to take and rely on multiple different softwares to be able to generate your final report. You can do it all in one centralized location. So one of the things that we built in as far as for the tab side is this little tech changes. And so this is a way to protect the office from having technicians override information. So we have two operating modes in TabOps reporting. We have the office mode, which means that you are directly connected to a cloud server. And then we have tech mode, which means that you are working independently off of your data collection device. 
when you're working off your independent data collection device, if you take and make a change to data that has already been written into the form, then what the system will do is it will notify the office that there are conflicts in here. And then the office would have the ability to take and come in and review those conflicts and say, what exactly did they change? Oh, they changed this. So therefore I wanna take and be able to either accept or reject that change. Obviously, if you accept the change, I'm going to pull it in my accept side and then accept that. It is going to automatically update that value for you at that time. So you have the ability to take and track what the technicians are doing <coughs> to be able to determine whether you would like to accept or reject those changes. This also is appropriate for like form deletions and things like that. So technicians don't have the ability to mess up inadvertently or advertently, um, the final report. In addition to that, under the forms collection, we have the ability to take in actually color forms. So let's say, for example, we wanted to take in highlight or color a particular form. I can go to the forms management console and I can take and choose to take and have these forms colored a particular color. What this does is allow you to group systems together for clarity for the field guys. So field guys can do supply or they can do room one or they can do, you know, hallway two, whatever, by being able to color coordinate those tabs. So having the ability to take and add tabs pretty easily. So basically, if I go to any category and I click on a tab, it will allow me to be able to take and actually apply that tab to the collection. At that point, then all I have to do is save the actual collection and then that data container or that tab is now available for me to take and enter data. When you look at our forms, we have identified three primary colors. You'll see light yellow, which is areas where you have the ability to take and modify. So these are gonna be areas where you can type information. You're gonna see green fields. This is where calculations are going to be performed based on information that is put in somewhere else in the actual uh, application. And then you'll see something on some forms that are kind of a uh, gold color, and those are choice boxes, which means that those are areas where you need to make a choice. For example, if you have a form and it is a dual form, it's exact same form for supply and return, but you identify what the actual forms function is at a time, you would have a choice box and it would say supply and return in it, and it would be gold color, meaning please choose which device, or which choice that you would like to have. So we do provide three separate color coordinations to be able to identify what the functionality is on those forms. Something else that we've given you guys to make it easier for you is the ability to take and add large quantities of data. So as you can see on this example here, the supply outlet data goes on to a second form. And so this right here means that it starts here and that it ends down here. Well, instead of being able to take and actually enter in information here and then having to add another form and then enter information on the second form, we give you what's called a schedule view. If I go to my view tab and go to schedule view, what you're going to notice is, is that I will convert this into an Excel spreadsheet or a spreadsheet type view. This allows me to take and put in large quantities of information. Everywhere you see a solid black line, that is a page break, which means that if you enter information below that line, it will create another page of this type for that collection. The reason that you would want to do this is, let's say, for example, you wanted to take and add a sum or add what we define as a floating total. So let's say, for example, I wanted to take and add a floating total here and I want to add these items up here. I could simply go to insert, add a sum, a total here, and then when I went back to my report view, then what that would do is it would take and put that floating total on my report view where I put it. So for example, if I wanted to take and actually see a total of a group or a collection of information, then I would have the ability to take and go and in the, insert those wherever I wanted to do so. So as you can see here, we have three colors showing up. Of course, these colors don't show up on the final report, but we have the yellow where the technician or the office enters information. Green is where calculations are performed. And then this pink color here shows that there's a floating total. 
these formulas are considered health self-healing formulas. So let's say, for example, this formula here has calculated 172 as being the value. Well, let's say a technician says, no, I don't want it to be 172, I want it to be 165 so that it falls inside a parameter. So you'll notice that we changed the color of it to let the office know that someone has manually changed the value of the calculation. If they were to save that and put that back to the office, it would show 165. If the office said, well, wait a minute, we wanted to do its calculation, they would simply just press the delete key, close and reload the project, and the actual form itself would self-heal and replace the formula back to what it was originally. So our forms are self-healing. So that is another aspect that we have put into the system to protect the office or to protect the office to prevent te field technicians from overriding formulas. Another shortcoming of the actual Excel file. Another thing that we've done is every single form in our collection has its own undo redo facility. So for example, as you can see, I've been making changes on this right here. So I have the ability to take an on this particular form, undo or redo as necessary. So I have those abilities directly in here. So I'm gonna close this project and I'm not gonna save. And then I'm gonna open up another project. Simple as taking and typing in the project number, it will automatically load the project for you. So some additional features that we have added in here for you guys, and one of those is our static pressure profile builder. So if I were to take and actually come here, we have an actual static pressure profile in here. So if I were to add a sheet, so let's say for example, I come in here and say, I'm gonna add a static pressure profile. I'm gonna save that form to my collection. And then I want to build my static pressure profile. I simply double click on my frame and that will give me my building tool. So we use this building tool for static pressure profiles, for uh, room air changes, for uh, fume hood calibrations and so forth and so on. So basically all you have to do is come in here and say, what do you want to do? I'm going to put a filter blank here. I'm going to take and put in a chill water coil here. I'm going to take and put in a fan here. And I'm going to take and put in a gas heat down here at the end. And so if I wanted to take and make them pretty, then I can put frames around them if I wanted to do so and so forth and so on. So this gives you the ability to drag and drop these objects onto here to take and actually make those changes onto the actual diagram. So you have the ability to come in and actually physically drop images on there. But in addition to that, you have the ability to take and put in text. So let's say, for example, you wanted to say something here like um, you took a reading and it was negative 0.25 inches. You could take and actually include that information directly on the drawing. By selecting that, you then have the ability to change its size, change its orientation and so forth and so on. So having the ability to take and put in test lines and then to put in test points, you have the ability to take and identify what those things are. So I would come here and I would grab this drawing and I would put it there to say, my test point A came in at negative 0.5. So you could take and annotate this drawing as well if you wanted to. If this is a common configuration of a static pressure profile, you could give it a name and then you could save it and then you would have that template available to you the very next time that you went to a project that had this same type of configuration. Once you've made all your changes, you do have the ability to save it and then to close it and you'll notice that it transfers it back to our static pressure profile diagram. So having the ability to take and put in their static pressure profiles is very important to being able to take and provide that little bit of graphical uh, additions to your actual applications. Something else that we have done that is of importance is to take and be able to allow you to include other types of documents. So let's say, for example, I wanted to take and import an actual Word document. So I've got a, this right here is my reporting product and I wanna bring in an actual Word document from outside here. So I'm gonna do an actual fun, functional performance testing checklist. So I bring in my actual functional performance testing checklist. This is a Word document. So if I go around and click in here and if I go to the home tab, you're gonna see Word functionality available to you. You're gonna see design and layout tools because we've brought a Word document in here. So you now have the functionality of Word inside the application. 
So if you wanted to take and bring in those, you know, functional performance testing checklist or some type of Word document that will help you, then you have that ability. In addition to being able to bring in Word documents, you also have the ability to bring in other Excel documents as well. So in this case here, what I have done is I have brought in an actual biosafety cabinet check um, form that we created for one of our clean room customers. It is a form which means that it doesn't have the ability to delete things that you don't want the technician to delete. So we have things that are protected, but you do have the ability to come in and enter information in blocks that you want to take and put in information for. And then as you can see, the calculations on that form are going to be performed correctly. You're going to notice that there are no identifiers, column A, column B, column C, because in this form, I have removed those. But let's say, for example, you wanted to bring in just a generic Excel document and work with it you have the ability to bring in an Excel document, and now you have the ability to take and actually delete rows and insert rows and so forth and so on. It is has the functionality of Excel. Again, conditional formatting, formatting as tables, merging cells, all the functionality or the majority of the functionality from Excel is now available from within our application as an actual Excel document import. So in addition to that, so I'm going to close this project and don't save, and I'm going to open the project again. In addition to that, you have the ability to take and import PDF diagrams as well. So let's say, for example, you wanted to bring in a calibration certificate inside of here. You now have the ability to include all of the items that you need inside the one application to generate your final report. So no more collecting data in an Excel file and then taking and printing it to PDF and then going to a PDF editor and then taking and modifying the PDF to put information in there. All of it gets generated inside of here. So when I go to take and do a print preview on this, you're going to notice that what's going to happen is you're going to see the actual cover and then you're going to see a table of contents. This table of contents is automatically generated at runtime and it will take and identify the actual page numbers for the actual final report. But something else that we've done to take and help you with your customers is we have given you the ability to hyperlink the table of contents. So for those large projects where there's 150, 200 pages, they can simply come through and go, oh, I want to see that item right there. And it will automatically jump them to that page in this actual report. So if I come back and go to the actual top of the actual report, which it went to the other side, so if I go back to the actual top of the report, then you have the ability to jump to different locations inside there by simply clicking on the actual page number. So if I wanted to take and go to any one of the pages, I had the ability to do so. So these names down here don't make much sense. So if we go back here to your forms management console, you then have the ability to take and manage all sorts of things. For example, let's say this ERV is a collection. You want to take and put in the actual furnace information and the actual return information on there as a collection. I can simply drag and drop those items onto there and take and put them in that location. So if I come in here and say, yep, I want that information all together there for ERV1, and then I go here to print preview that information. What you're going to notice now is, is that on our table of contents, we have grouped those items together and we have identified what each of those individual pages are underneath it. The last quick thing that I wanted to take and show you was our actual Tabots markup, which is this right here allows us to be able to take and come in and auto count information on the actual PDF. So you have the ability to mark up and to uh, do auto counting on your registers directly from the application. I thought I had three more minutes according to my timer, but hey, um, so I guess I'm turning it back over to Colleen and letting Colleen take and take the wheel. Yes, thanks, Derek. Sorry about that interruption there. Oh, no, um, we're going to get started on the Q&A in just a minute. Uh, before we get started on that, um, I am going to start the first giveaway. Uh, Ameritech is giving away one Tab Ops reporting software license for one year. This prize is valued at $1,500. If you would like this item to be yours, please comment Ameritech rocks in the chat box. We'll do the drawing after the Q&A. So good, good luck, everybody. All right, so we're moving over to some questions here. 
First question for you, Derek. Design and commissioning challenge is that in many cases, the operating status, mode of operation, et cetera, of both the equipment under evaluation and possibly adjacent zone equipment is needed to evaluate the TAB data. How is this addressed? So this, okay, so we're custom application development. So we would work with you as a end user to decide how you want to take and make that look. So this container here is fully customizable. So we are going to work with you as an individual for you to take and create the application to function the way you want it to. So out of the several hundred that we have out there running at this point in time, there's no two of them exactly alike because each customer has customized their forms container to take and operate how they want to. I hope that answers your question. All right, moving on to the next one. It says, is there a metric option? Not currently. So again, we are continuing to develop the application over time. And so basically as people continue purchasing it and using it, we're adding additional features. Again, this is a very young product. We've had it out on the market for just a little over a year now. So great question. All right. Is there an unaccept feature if someone on quick thought wanted to do so after having accepted? Yeah, so you had the ability to take and even if you went through and accepted a change, you would have the ability to go back and look at tech history and undo that. All right, and we have someone wondering the cost. So it depends, we have different levels. So it depends on whether you wanna do software as a service. So that's an individual license. So that runs about 149 for the initial license per user per month. The more license you buy, the cheaper it gets. It can get down as low as $85 per user per month, or you can buy them in packages. And so basically that would take and actually, you would purchase a, uh, use case of a package and that would allow you to be able to take in customized forms and customized functionality and so forth and so on and those licenses run anywhere from so a single license is retailed at $4,200 a month but groups of 10 of them are as cheap as $1,800 uh, excuse me not $4,200 a month $4,200 one-time charge no additional charges for the forms or up to 10 of them can be as cheap as $1,800 one-time charge. With that comes the actual monthly subscription fee. So, and that is what Microsoft charges us to be able to take and store the data. So uh, talking about pricing, if you have an interest in it, you know, get with us and tell me what you know, you're looking to do. And I'll tell you what the cost would be for your situation. Okay, great. That was the last question we have time for. Thanks to everyone who entered your name in the running to win the one tab ops reporting software license for one year. I have my colleague Sam here selecting a lucky winner. And the winner is Tommy Danley. Congratulations. We'll connect with you after the demo so you can receive your prize. We'll now take a really quick break about four minutes before we start the next demo. Great time to grab some coffee, snacks, or answer a quick email. So we'll see you then.